Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode seven of the Saturday Morning Gaming Show. It is September 14th, 2019, and I am your co-host, Ryan, joined by... Your other co-host, Lobos. Hey, Lobos. Today we're playing World of Warcraft on the PC. That was released in 2004, so not quite retro as per our rules. Yeah, but we let it slide. Yeah, yeah. this, this was one of those that... Um, you know, because it just came out, the World of Warcraft Classic just came out. Yep. Uh, we wanted to get back in uh, as it was roughly 15 years ago. So th we, we wouldn't have the possibility of doing this another five years. So I think this was, uh, I think this is uh, something that really made sense for us. Uh, it, this game has both uh, impacted both of us quite a bit in just like personal a, lives a and, and yeah. uh, professional lives. Absolutely. And all that. Now, I did want to say that uh, we are going to be covering the Horde and the Alliance, but because I, uh, Ryan, has the uh, has the, the the privilege of recording the video, I right. have a bias towards Alliance. So we got about <laughs> 15 minutes of Horde-specific gameplay and 45 minutes of Alliance, but it's not <laughs> going to be focused on the factions. It's going to be mostly just for, for topics, uh, conversation points that are actually shared between both races. Yeah, and I see here that um, you did a Twitter poll for mm -hmm. the preference between I Horde did. and Alliance. Just saying, I don't, I don't care what that poll says. Oh, uh, you, oh don't you? I don't. No, I have standards. I don't pander to wow. our fan base. Seventy-one percent wow. prefer Horde, which means that ninety-two percent prefer Alliance. Good job, everyone. Thank you. Um, that's that doesn't. All right. Also, a heads up, um, I was big into MMOs um, in high school and college, and the, the MMO I played a lot before this was EverQuest. Mm. So I'm going to be comparing this a lot to EverQuest because it, it's important for me, and I think from a historical value, to understand why some of the changes in World of Warcraft were so monumental to the genre. Yeah, that makes sense. I'd never played EverQuest, so I'm interested mm. to hear. Yeah, well, yeah. you know what? We got to get you playing EverQuest one of these days here. Mm -hmm. uh, and for people that are watching the video, you might see that kind of a new editing technique we have. We do, we are speeding up some of the footage uh, because World of Warcraft, oh. while I think has a great kind of like overarching, if you look at what you did like for the past five hours, you, know, uh -huh. you log in, you did a lot of progress in five hours, but the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay <laughs> is a little bit harder to capture. I right, think on a I, per minute basis. I think so. my stream audience knows that more than more than anything yeah, at this point. Yeah, I've been... so and that's why we're kind of fast forwarding. <laughs> we want to be able to show the viewers uh, kind of a sample size of the the area there um, without being so mundane. Now I'm going to approach this in a completely unbiased way, but trolls are garbage. So I hate this character. Okay, well I am playing a troll on, <laughs> uh, a troll rogue here. <laughs> um, and so it's actually worth mentioning why I picked the the troll ro or the the troll for the rogue class. Now, uh, when you start, you get to choose a faction mm -hmm. and you get to choose a race and a class. Now, not yep. not all classes are available uh, to all races for or sorry, all factions. So the alliance True. gets the paladin, the um, horde gets the shaman. Yep. And that's the only the only um, discrepancy there. But then you choose your race, and at least in classic, the race does kind of dictate the class that you can choose. Yeah, some are very locked. Like, Torin is the is the only race that a shaman can be, for example. Um, and I think the most versatile is a warrior. A lot of the races can be warrior, but then, like, hunter is a little more limited and kind of spellcaster ones. Mm -hmm. um, but they open that up much later as, as WoW progressed. And and the other so why would you choose one race over the other? Um, well, each oh, race actually has. Wait, oh wait, druid. Oh yeah, orcs can be shamans too. That's oh right. yeah, that's true. true. <laughs> so uh, each, each race does have a unique <laughs> set of skills that uh, um, someone may want, you know. And there may be opinions on the internet about what you know. If you want to be a rogue, this is the best um, race to have, or a priest, this is the best race to have. But the reason I went with the um, the um, troll for the rogue is you have this adrenaline ability where every, I think it's every two minutes, 
you can use it, and then it basically increases your attack speed. Yeah, berserking, yeah. troll berserking. Yeah, and so each each class has like kind of a, a cool little uh, active ability you can use, and I think they all have a couple passive abilities you yep. can use. Uh, like for instance, the undead can swim underwater without having to breathe, um, and the hu if you're human, you actually get, I think it's five percent increased. Um, faction Repu game, reputation Rep game, reputation, yep. which becomes that's kind of more of a late game grinding thing. Yeah, but um, I always like Torin because Torin gets the war stomp ability, which is AOE stun up to five enemies, and they also have like five percent more health by default. Um, they're better at herbalism, things like that. So I don't know. Yeah, so let's get into actually jumping into the game. So when you start, every faction, uh, sorry, every race has a little cutscene and it kind of fly not, it's not really a cutscene it's an in-game cinematic right and it's flying through the world and what i think was really interesting about there is they still have the players that are being rendered so right it's not, yeah. it's not like a pre-rendered thing which is i think really cool because depending on how things line up you can see just people wandering around in the world makes it feel very live yeah, and very definitely. cool and um and then almost immediately they throw you into combat if you want so basically almost every faction has sorry I, I keep interchanging faction and race but every every race has this you know starting area and there's usually enemies nearby that are yellow right and there are three types of um designations in the green game there's green which is a friendly mm -hmm. which means you can't attack there's yellow which means it's uh like a neutral character where it's like if you attack them they will attack you back yep and then there's red, which is they will attack you. Now, there's some rules that kind of gate some of that sometimes. And again, this is just for AI. This doesn't include players there. Right. But if you're a sufficient high enough level, so let's say I'm level 30, uh, a level 10 creature isn't apt to attack me because they are they know I will stomp them. Right. But if that's flipped the other way, if I'm level 10 and they're, they're level 30, they will come at me and, oh, yeah. and wreck me there. And especially in, in vanilla and classic, like the aggro radius, if you're really low level, would be huge sometimes. So you'd be trying to, like, maybe scout a new area, and there's, like, this level 50 way over there, and it's like... Ugh. And anything that's, like, 10 levels, I think, and higher above you is skull. It doesn't skull, even tell yeah. you the level. So yeah. that was always an exciting moment when you were like, what is that? Run! And then, it, it, like, people might be in your party, and they're like, what's going on? And they just start running yeah, and, and panicking. And, and it's actually really hard to hit things that are even, like, three levels higher than you. You start, they start deflecting, resisting, yeah. everything. So you can, with a large enough party, take down a, a higher level creature mm. uh, within some, um, some level range there. But it's going to be pretty hard with any amount of people to take down something that is a skull yeah it's just just I, because the numbers yeah. are hard to line up. i will say that the numbers are more um they're flexible for like pvp um because there was a, a point where some alliance as i was leveling my horde tried to gank myself and a couple other people and there there was a skull level warrior and uh he he didn't manage to take out any of us so oh that's good it was, <laughs> it was a good time yeah well, uh, so kind of continuing on, you've killed the first couple monsters, mm. and you level up pretty quickly. It's about like seven or eight creatures that you kill, sure. and uh, so it's kind of cool. It makes you feel um, like you're progressing. You, I think you you probably get like another ability at level two or or at least three to kind of keep spicing things up. And it's here where I want to kind of start talking about EverQuest because mm. what World of Warcraft did really, really well is they got you into the action and they started you off in a very small area. Right. And, and every single race does this where you, you go into World of Warcraft, right? And there's a very small, it's actually closed off. Right. It's literally a funnel. Right. And so you do, say, three or four levels in that. And so it's... So this is like a small trading outpost. Post you complete four levels, then you go out to like a small city. Right. And yeah. then after that, you go to the big city. Right. And if you contrast with something like EverQuest, what they did is they started you off in your home city, which was sprawling. It was <laughs> huge. There was no enemies nearby. Yeah. And it took a lot of direction to actually get out and figure out how do I actually have fun in this game? <laughs> but World of Warcraft is, is great in that it just like, here, we're going to hold your hands right. through this. And 
And when we say hold hands in 2004 MMO, holding hands is much different than what you might consider from uh, holding hands in today's MMO. So, yeah. you know, there was still a penalty for dying. Um, it was a time penalty. It wasn't like an XP loss, but you still had to run back and get your body. Right. Um, enemies can kill you easily at, e at level four or five. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think my first death as a, a horde was probably, you know, level three or four. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just one of those things where you get careless and you start getting a little too cocky on your abilities and uh, another mob attacks you. One of the red mobs we were talking about attacks you when you're low health and you, you, you die there. But yeah, again, try, trying to take on two enemies even that are equivalent level can be... It, with bad luck, if you're missing and they're dodging or whatever, mm -hmm. like yeah, it, it gets it gets hairy real quick. But also another thing for that um, kind of not holding your hand, they don't even have like any quest indicators by default. Um, they have they have an indicator if there's somebody on your mini map that you need to turn in a quest to. But other than that, it's all about reading and and mm -hmm. it's pretty good that most of it, for the most part of telling you where to go. But some quests are just like, yeah, I need you to kill this good luck and then you're like what Where? yeah okay yeah that's a good point and i actually tried to play this game without using any mods or yeah. without reusing any website help and it was fun because it would be like hey the the scallywags in the northwest they they yeah. stole my whatever go kill seven of them and collect their insert random body part here yeah and and so you do that you'd be like okay it says to the west okay up here i think this is it yeah. But the worst are when they're, they're not very specific, where they're like, hey, someone stole my ring, go try to find it, or something like that. And then you're like, well, okay, do I need to kill someone to try yeah. to get the ring, or is it... Find it on the ground. Is it on the ground? Yeah. And the worst part is, sometimes those things that you pick up on the ground are randomized in right. terms of location. Yeah. So you can see someone run up to, let's say they have to pick up a crate. You can see someone run up, pick up that crate, and it'll actually despawn in the world. And then sometimes it'll respawn in the same spot, so you can pick that up also. But sometimes it goes somewhere else in the world. And so you, you're kind of like, all right, well, now I know that there's the crate that moves around in the world, and I have to go find it each time. Yeah. Um, but again, those are small little details that uh, really, if you're, if you're not in it just for the classic, what you do is uh, you, know, you talk to people. You, you say in general, hey, where's the ring? Or you just go on the internet and say, hey, where's where's the ring there? Yeah, it really encourages like social interaction, whether it mm -hmm. be for figuring out a quest or for just getting help to to clear to a certain objective or whatever, which, yeah. um, you know, Modern WoW has that, but it's all automated. And once you're done, everybody kind of disappears and then you don't see those people again necessarily. And I mean, we can talk about it a bit more in depth, but the route that WoW has gone these days, like it's understandable with the requirements for the MMO to stay like seemingly populated and and not you know reduce wait times for everything you're trying to do. But at the same time, it takes away from this personal feeling when everybody that you play with is always on the same server mm -hmm. and yeah. you're going to see them constantly while you're leveling and then at max level in, in all the battlegrounds and all yeah. that stuff yeah i'm glad you brought that up because i wanted to talk a little bit about this is um these I, I call them um um micro friction points in this and so um you and i both have have experience on the back end of of an mmo so we understand mm -hmm. the sort of business realities of Anytime you have a micro friction point, that's anything between, oh, I can't get a group to do this dungeon. Right. Um, there's no one to talk to. Uh, I can't buy anything off the auction house because there's nothing there. It's hard to find uh, battle or PVP matches. Right. Anytime you hit one of those, that's a potential for a pr play player to churn out of the environment. Yeah. Right. And so it's a necessity for these really big budget uh, MMOs, you know, World of Warcraft included, to try to smooth out those micro friction points such that it's a smooth experience for the majority of the people. Yeah. And that works out really well, especially when you're, uh, you know, a, a father or a mother and you have like an hour to play before you put your kids to bed or after right, you put your yeah. kids to bed and you just want to make some progress. And mm. so, you know, that's that's great. But for for some gamers, myself included, I revel in in achieving uh, persevering through those micro friction points, and I think I, I would argue things like Dark Souls exemplify yeah. that, where it's like, yeah, it is not intended for everyone to be able to hit the end, but it is rewarding to be able to do that. Right. 
And so I think that's why I, I, I prefer the experience of WoW Classic is there's all these little things you have like I have to shout over and over and over I, I'm looking for a healer I'm looking for yeah. a tank there's no way that this is going to automate me also yeah. if I find a tank and he's really good yeah. I'm more apt to friend him or if he's really bad I'll be like I'm never partying with that guy again yeah yeah it just strengthens those bonds when you do find somebody that that is helpful or good at what they're doing that you know you're attached to them and you go you think about it next time you need that role or or whatever to fill a, a position you're like okay is that guy on i'll see you i'll whisper him see what's up and then yeah it just builds those social links like mm -hmm. so and those, much more and those last absolutely yeah, and it's really do. great in, in those friendships you know you, you hear all the time of people getting married through yeah. mmos or yeah. just meeting and having um, um group meetups um lifelong friendships mm -hmm. um even there, there are people that jumped in classic to play with me, join my guild that uh, I finally met after like 10 years playing in vanilla, like 10 years after playing vanilla and we still play together and it's crazy. Oh, that's like great, yeah. I, I contact people like that often, more often than like people in real life. It's well, the just, funny thing is a lot of your personality shine, <laughs> like will, will um, show through in this game. For instance, uh, some of the quests in the in the game require you to kill like let's say ten humans and five gnolls. Sure. Or uh, kill five gnolls and then collect ten candles. Right. And so we'll, often what will happen is you'll be finding other people in the group mm -hmm. and there's like or, or around the area and you're like hey let's group up because then you everyone shares the kill. Um, so it, basically, if you and I group up and we kill a knoll, we both get credit for that kill. Right. But if the knoll drops a candle that we need, then uh, only one of us gets it. Right. So if you're a random person, a lot of times what, what people will do is they'll, they'll, they'll their party up. And let's say that I need three more candles, but you got your last candle. Yeah. So you, and, and a lot of times people will be like, okay, cool. I, found, I got my stuff. I'm out. See you. Have fun. Yep. And I think that's um, really disrespectful. Uh. And, and I actually, I was like, hey, you know, we're in this together. Right. I'm going to help you because you help me. And it's, exactly. It, and because it's sort of a random drop chance, it's like I could get all my, my 10 candles. You could get none. And that feels real <laughs> bad for and you. And just leave. So I'm the type of person that I'm like, hey, we're going to do this together. I'm going to see the, this, the, the thing through. Yeah. Um, and I think that that, that, that sort of, when, you, when you get people like that, you're like, hey, this is a good person. Mm. You know, they're, they're saying I'm not trying to min max my leveling i want to make sure that people have a good experience yeah yeah exactly and i think ad, um personalities and attitudes like that are far more valuable when it's the server is you know isolated to itself because especially if you're a bad player yeah you'll get blacklisted people will go post on the forums and be like this guy stole this item like rolled need he didn't even he's not, he can't even use it with his class or whatever don't group with him mm -hmm. and people might think that like you know they're just trolling and la 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 but you know down the line they might try and join like a a, a big raid or something to do this and they'll be like oh no nah, you're blacklisted yeah something like, you could do at at hour 10 in the game could prevent you from joining groups at hour 50. Yep. so it's it's one of these things where you really have to be cognizant of how you are as a person and not just a faceless avatar um, which again i really enjoy I, I like the mmos because of that strong sense of community there um, now, so uh, I want to jump on a little bit to, to more community stuff because in the video here, what we're seeing is something that I really enjoy <laughs> is, so this is like day one um, <laughs> and the, the servers have tons of people. And so we're in like the second little tiny village and there's a guy, he's like, hey, I'm making linen bags uh -huh. for everyone. All you have <laughs> to do is bring me six uh, linen. And so uh, to kind of put some more context in this, you have a limited inventory space to start with. You can carry what, like 12 or 14 items. Yeah. But then you can craft these bags and each of these bags, depending on the, the type of bag, you can increase your inventory space. Mm. And so there's many ways to do this. You can buy bags uh, off the auction house or from players or from um, quests can, can drop it. You can find them off enemies, yeah. but they're pretty rare. Mm -hmm. And so this guy was just like, hey, I'm sitting here, I'm crafting them for free. Just bring me the materials. And, and so there was literally just a line of people <laughs> waiting patiently for him to craft it. And yeah. 
and it's it, he's getting a service out of it also because he's training up and and um, getting a higher uh, tailoring skill, which yep. is the skill that requires or is required to make bags. Mm -hmm. But it, it's really cool to see that sort of like, all right, this guy is helpful. And when I get to that point, I want to do that same thing. Right. I want to help out other people because I think it feels good to, to be able to help out people that are lower level trying to get up uh, and just in like very s small bursts. Maybe that just means I buff them as I, if I, as I run by them. Yeah. Maybe that means I craft a bag. Maybe that means I give a guy 10 silver if he's looking for it. You know, yeah. it's, uh, there's a lot of, of ways you can really kind of prop up the community here. Yeah, like like you were saying, it really does bring up people's personalities because you could become the guy on the server that just like chills in one spot and will perform you know service a or b and you, you make a name for yourself and at a certain point like if you're looking for the kind of work that that person does you're not going to look for somebody else because you know this right. guy is the dude that does all that and stuff. when you craft the item it actually imprints your name on it oh so, right yeah, yeah. So if you make Even a bag better, yeah. if you make a bag it'll be like okay you made a woolen bag and it was made by in character name so yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, and there's a lot of ways to even though the the kind of design is around getting max level, acquiring gear and loot and then doing raids and stuff like that. Like you can play in mul many different ways. You can you could never do a dungeon or raid and just collect things or you could just you can have a goal of just being the best, you know, profession at best at your profession on the server or just playing the auction house, just making money. And there's just so many ways to approach it. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. There are a different way, a bunch of different ways to um, sort of progress through this game, including uh, you know XP. Uh, ultimately, you do want to hit level 60, but there are different ways of getting XP. You can uh, you can just kill monsters. You can do quests. You can do a combination of those. You even get X, uh, uh, XP for exploration, although it's very small. Uh, I do feel like I heard at some point there's a guy that actually leveled to max level just by exploring, but that was, I it, think, in WoW, like, later version of WoW. I, I don't think you did it from exploring, but there was a guy who did it with uh, just picking herbs oh, on the panda starting. Okay. So it's, I know it's a little off topic, but uh, later when they introduced the Pandaren race, uh, at some point you, you, you start on your starter island, and then you have to choose Horde or Alliance. But he leveled by picking herbs and never made that choice. So he had 60 and was just a neutral panda. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. to, you know. And and some people I know do hardcore runs. I, you, yourself included, have seen, I've seen some hardcore, <laughs> um, basically where you die in your character, um, you delete your character. I don't think there's an, an explicit way that the game supports that. I think you just kind of have right. to do it on honor system. Yeah, there is actually a website that tracks, like oh. you, you put in your name or whatever and you say, I am performing this, the Iron Man challenge, which, requires like no talent no skill upgrades like no oh, wow. no uh green or higher quality items like you have to have whites or gray items and i still have a character on on the retail servers that is in progress of that it's like level 60 something wow um i just haven't continued it uh yeah so uh, i wanted to go back a little bit to xp sure um so one of the things that that world of warcraft added was the concept of rested XP, oh, yeah. which was really great. Again, nice. we're going back to that thing, that, that the scenario where uh, you're more grown up. Actually, I shouldn't say that you're more grown up. I should <laughs> just say you don't, you don't have a lot of time. Right. And so what you can do is you can log out anywhere in the world and you get some amount of rested XP. But if you go, if you log out in a city or uh, an inn, in, in, yeah. so basically like social hubs, right. you get a large amount of rested XP. And what that does is uh it basically gives you like a buffer and as you kill monsters you get 200 percent mm -hmm. xp towards that buffer again right. that's really great i've been using that a lot on the server you're on with the rogue there the, I've, i basically have two characters i have a priest that's alliance and then i have a a horde uh rogue and i pretty much just log in burn through the rest of the xp which gives you about a level um uh, at lower levels and then I, you know, log off and, and whatever. And I like that because then it allows me to kind of alternate. And it's like, all right, well, use the rest of the XP on this character or use it on this one. It allows me to um, uh, yeah, sort of pipeline uh, those characters. Yeah, sort of the start of that, um, like, accessibility type thing. But nothing that is, you know, taking away from the experience. It's not like you get an advantage by just, oh, I'm just going to log out. And, I mean, technically you play less, but mm -hmm. you're not making 
anywhere near as much progress as somebody who is still playing. So. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. Now, uh, we we were just in Westfall. So, by the way, for people that are all listening on the podcast, we are now switched over to Alliance on the video. And uh, I just really love the environments of the Alliance because they they swap. You basically start out in this uh, this sort of nice forest, very lush. I would I would say picturesque. <laughs> and um, you spend about 10 levels there, and then you go on to Westfall, which is is sort of like a, um, a farmland that's always in harvest. You know, so think of it like the September to October. You go out there, and it's kind of this brown yeah. straw, yeah. and they have hay bales there. It just... I love Halloween, <laughs> and I think that's why I, we're gonna we're gonna see another zone later on called Duskwood that I absolutely adore. <laughs> but that's why I really love Alliance is because you get to go through these really cool thematic areas. And for Horde, uh, at least for the um, the orc and troll, it's a lot of um, sort of like prairies, savannas, and it's it's kind of, I. I it, I mean, Horde basically, yeah, you get their starting areas, which are, I mean, for orcs and trolls, it's kind of more of the same. It's like mm -hmm. desert. It's yeah. like desert barren. And then you go to the barrens, which is more kind of kind of grasslands, but pretty dead grass and yeah. barren. And for, for me, it's not, it's not visually appealing, and you do spend a lot of time there. Right, and and there's also if you play as a gnome or a dwarf, you start in uh, the the Dunmore Rogue, which is like snowy area, or if you start as undead, you'll start in Tears Fall Glades, which is like a very dark kind of kind of corrupted it, it, forest now area. Now, if I remember right, though, when you start up as Horde, you or uh, um, you start out as undead, you basically come out of a coffin. Oh right? yeah, you like, get, you yeah. you run out of like this like yeah sarcophagus area because yeah, I forgot about that. I yeah. haven't made an undead in forever. But. Yeah, it's it's really cool. <laughs> so one other thing I'd like to talk about here is the quests. So we've talked about previously killing creatures and um, picking up their items, but they also have all sort of interactable quests. And so this is one. I'm in the the deep run tram on the alliance side. And this is a cool one because it's very low impact and it's just a nice little like, oh, here's a fun little thing to do. So basically this guy is like, hey, I need you to collect some rats for me. I'm going to give you this flute. And I think it's a <laughs> play on the, the Pied Piper. So you get this flute and you you basically play the flute at him and the rat follows you and you collect five of them. <laughs> and then you go back and there's really nothing other than that. Right. But you don't get a lot of uh, rewards for it, but you do get some sort of rewards but at the same time, these type of things are actually kind of difficult to implement if you think about it in an MMO, because essentially what you're doing is you're collecting a rat. Sure. But, but MMOs are somewhat transient in nature in that, like, let's say you have four out of five rats captured. What happens if I log off? Mm -hmm. What happens if I leave the area? Yeah. What happens if I delete the, you know, so there's all these little things where these, these quests, while seemingly are, are very simple in nature, there's considerable amount of stuff on the back end to actually support like all the different scenarios that could happen to a player that uh, may not actually exist midway through the quest. Sure. You know, and so those type of things are really kind of interesting to, to look at. And it's like they, they beyond the simple things of just killing 10 monsters or whatever, they have some of these collection quests where um, sometimes you're collecting rats, sometimes you're collecting other boxes or whatever, and then turning those in. Yeah. Uh, and it's also worth noting, you know, going back to EverQuest, quests existed in EverQuest, but they were kind of hidden. It, a lot of them was basically like you'd have to know what an a, uh, NPC was looking for. So basically you go up to an EverQuest, you'd, you'd say, hey, old Bob. And yeah. Bob would say, oh, uh, I've got a quest for you. And then you can type in, you know, what's the quest? And he can tell you, oh, go kill, go get 10 of these things. Okay. Um, there's no tracker. You don't. Rem uh. There's no way to remember that other than to write that down. And then you go <laughs> over, and you you literally give him those ten things, and there was no real acknowledgement that you were giving him because of the quest. Right, right. You could give him nine things, yeah. or you could give him ten of the wrong things, <laughs> and he'd still take them. Right. And so questing. It, so yeah. So questing in EverQuest was very rudimentary, and in World of Warcraft really had 
this you know really refined quest system where it was like no you can only give these 10 items when you have those 10 items and then you get rewarded and it's very clear like uh, when you when your quest is ready to be completed there's a question mark saying hey he's ready to complete the quest a question mark over his head right it says hey turn in the quest here yeah so um, uh, again big strides from everquest which, um, by the way, EverQuest was released in 1999, so just five years um, mm. difference between those two games. And this just well, you know, took EverQuest and they, they kind of uh, you know, ironed out a lot of the big issues and streamlined a lot of the, the experience. Yeah, I think like five years probably is how long they spent making the game, right? Like maybe five to seven years, I'm not sure. But uh, <coughs> clearly a lot of it was modeled after EverQuest. Mm -hmm. They wanted to do their own take on an, on an MMO. Excuse me. Are you okay over there? I think so. Okay. I think so. They had they had a bunch of very popular IPs, um, StarCraft, what? WarCraft, uh, Diablo mm -hmm. at this point, and they uh, they just wanted to do something bigger and, and yeah, wow is what yeah, came from it. Yeah, good point. And um, you know, it, like you said, they model this off of EverQuest, and we know that for a fact because a lot of high-ranking Blizzard employees had a very powerful guild in EverQuest called Legacy of Steel. Mm. And um, so uh, uh, I think it was Rob Pardo was one of the, the people, Jeff Kaplan, uh, although he wasn't working at, um, at Blizzard at the time. Yeah. Jeff Kaplan was, uh, uh, um, came on board to uh, help World of Warcraft after being in one of the best guilds in EverQuest uh, called Legacy of Steel. And there's little references like Diablo 3 will have a uh, shop called Legacy of Steel. Uh, and I think actually even World of Warcraft has a shop called Legacy of Steel or something like that. Nice. It's kind of referencing that. So, yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of real passion for MMOs and EverQuest came into uh, World of Warcraft. And you can, you, again, you can definitely see the things that they made. Um, they improved, like, you know, for example, the Griffins. Um, mm -hmm. Being able to, there's still a lot of traveling from point A to point B, but once you get there, you can, uh, many times each zone has a griffin point, which acts as almost like, um, it's not really a fast travel because you still have to ride the griffin from point to point, mm -hmm. but faster you can, travel. faster travel, <laughs> and you can basically jump on the griffin and kind of go make a sandwich and yeah. it'll be there in three or four minutes there. Uh, and so that was a huge quality of life improvement there. Now, we're getting to, uh, where are we? Uh, I forget the name of this zone here, but it's one of the, it's like the third or fourth zone you go to as an alliance. And uh, Lac Modan, that's what it's called. Lac Modan, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we're starting to get to the point where they're going to do a lot more things where you go get a quest and it says go kill 10 of these guys and you, you go back and you're like, all right, sir, I killed the 10 guys you wanted me to. The guy's like, great, go kill 15 of these other guys that are right back where you were. <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, okay, cool. I, I'm going to do that. And you go back. <laughs> and then he's like, all right, are you ready for this one? You're going to go back there. But next time you're going to kill 20 guys. <laughs> and the big boss The guy. big boy, yeah. The big boy. So yeah. they, they kind of get a lot of uh, reuse out of the content here. Yeah, and uh, part of that I feel like is is narrative, right? You, you'll you start in an area and they'll be like, hey, there's these pesky like kobolds and you go and you take out the kobolds and then you go back and they're like, well, they're still messing around with our stuff. There's got to be another nest of them over here and then you go over there and then they're like, well, we found the leader and take out the leader and then all's good and then to do that you complete the quest and then they're like, thank you and they give you a reward and you're like, okay, cool, I'll get you know, there were steps in that storyline, mm -hmm. and yeah. I completed it, and yeah, I feel good. I feel good about that. That's a great segue, because we're going to talk about how that storyline progresses for the Alliance, at least. Oh. So, uh, early on in the very uh, very first starting areas, you hear about this, this um, mm, I guess, kind of like a pirate gang called the Defias. Ah, yes. And they're, um, they're a bunch of rogues who are just causing trouble, and a bunch of bandits. <laughs> And you actually are killing Defias all the way from Elwyn, which is the first area, to Westfall, which is the second area. And then you finally get to go raid the Defias group mm. uh, in the, the Alliance's first dungeon called the Dead Mines. Mm -hmm. And this is really cool because this arc continues and actually it even goes past this. So once you kill the Defias leader, uh, his name is Van Cleef. Yeah. Once you kill the Defias leader, it actually then moves you on, and so you actually have this narrative. It's 
it there is a narrative there. I think it's it's kind of loose. And if you're yeah. looking for like a really strong story, it's not <laughs> that. Right. But at least you have this narrative throughput where it's like you can see the progression and, and, the, and who's working for who and how this all ties into your adventures through Azeroth there. Yeah, you've got reasons for what you're doing as opposed to just like, just uh, let's kill go kill some dudes. Here. Yeah, because yeah. I need to get a, the loot. I need to get a bub of XP here. Yeah. Yeah, precisely. But uh, so we we enter the dead nine at dead mines. I um, about level eighteen. I think you can start getting here around seventeen if you really want to push it. But this was a really great experience for me because, again, being the first experience, uh, the first dungeon I've been to, I I had nothing, no idea what to expect when I first played this. I played a lot of EverQuest dungeons, and yep. the way that EverQuest dungeons work are completely different than what we have here. So first of all, EverQuest dungeons were all um, completely open spaces. Uh, they were yes. not instance. So that was a big change. World of Warcraft added instances. Instances basically means that you have your own private dungeon. Yeah. But what you would do in EverQuest is you'd go in there and you'd, you'd call a camp check. And that basically what that means is that uh, there'd be like five or six camps that would respawn monsters over and over and over. And so you'd sit there and camp that Mon those monsters and just kill them for hours and hours and hours <laughs> and if you wanted to go do a dungeon and it was all camped you could not do that dungeon <laughs> and again you would sit in one spot and have monsters get pulled to you hmm. in world of warcraft though dungeons are completely different they are an experience that you go you actually travel through it's more of a dungeons and die dungeons and dragons style dungeon right. We oh, were yeah. like, here's the start. We're going to go progress all the way through the end. It's our own dungeon. At the end, there's going to be a boss. And then we leave and we, you can do it again. Or you can just, you know, uh, break up the group. Right. And there are, I think in the Dead Mines, there's like three or four bosses. Sure. And so we're getting to the first boss here, which is really cool because it's a, it's a, like a gnome. Or I think it's a, a goblin. Goblin, yeah. In a, uh, like an ex, it's basically an exosuit. It's like a mining. He's a he's a miner. It's a shredder. A yeah. shredder, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you kill the shredder, and then like half a second later, the little goblin kind of spawns there. And it was yeah. it was cool because it's like, oh, uh, you know, he popped out of his his suit. Right, and, right. Uh, you got to kill him too. And so that was a cool little mechanic, uh, where it's like this was a scripted thing. <laughs> and that's what we see more and more of in these dungeons, is these scripted encounters, mm -hmm. and. You know, kind of going way into the future when you talk about raiding things like Onyxia, which is a big dragon, oh, and yeah. then Molten Core, which has like six or seven big bosses. Each one of these are scripted to have a unique mechanic that you have to learn as a group. Yep. And again, it's a huge change <laughs> because the majority of the bosses in EverQuest were tank and spanks. Gotcha. Or you just have a guy, you know, you have a warrior. You just need the right gear mm -hmm. and the right organization, and then you can kill the thing with time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and healing and, and damage. Whereas this is like, well, you got to know how to do this thing. Go stand in the circle or you're going to wipe the raid. Right. Um, so that's, um, you know, again, we don't go too much into to raiding in this because it, it is a very high level. But I wanted to at least mention it. Uh, and raids in World of Warcraft were basically limited to 40 people. And you wanted every single one of them. Yeah. Uh, for me, raiding and, and dungeons are what brought, what really, like, solidified my love for MMOs just because it's such a unique style of gameplay playing with so many people where you need to organize what everybody's doing and you all need to show up at the same time and go do this thing it's to me it's such a special like just a type of gameplay like I said mm -hmm. um, and the mechanics of it I really fell in love with it like uh, Kind of led me into wanting to make games and and understanding how games are made and all that stuff um yeah so, it's a good point about that roles there because you do really need specific roles you always need a tank you always need a healer you always need a dps and you can have kind of like two fill yeah but yeah. Ev every single group needs that oh, or else you're gonna have a real hard time going through and that does uh um, go back to that real um, strong identity as a player. If you're known as like a really great tank yeah. or a really great oh, healer, yeah. people are going to remember you and really want to bring you in um, to that group there. And and similarly, I think it's cool to make a name for yourself. You can make those big plays well, uh, where like the party's down and out, but you keep them alive as a healer. <laughs> and people are like, wow, that's yeah. awesome. And then yeah. you kind of feel good about being able to like, you know, single-handedly pull the fight out of yeah. the fire there. Yeah. 
Um, I'll just really quickly touch on like probably my favorite raid boss is, um, well, there's two of them, but I'll talk about one that's in vanilla actually. In the AQ40 raid, there's a boss called Viscidus. And basically only Horde would kill this boss because they had shamans and they had nature resist totem, which helped with a lot of nature resist for the fight. Um, but it was this big blob and the blob would constantly just shoot out like poison bolts this whole time. And what you needed to do is you needed to hit him X amount of times, like 100, 150 times with frost spells. And the amount of damage didn't matter at all. So you'd hit him enough in a, free, in a certain period of time, otherwise he would unfreeze, and you'll freeze him solid. And at that point, most of the raid, which is standing really far away out of range of these poison bolts, runs in, and then you have to hit him physically enough amount of times in a certain amount of time in order to shatter him. And then he, mm -hmm. he'll explode into 20 equivalent blobs around the room that slowly converge and then reform into oh, him. Oh, cool. And every blob you kill is 5% of his health. Okay. So it was this awesome, so, like... So you have to do that cycle probably a couple yep. times to get him all down. Yeah, he oh, reforms, cool. and then he has as much health as... And then the raid runs out again. Mm -hmm. And so you basically have, like, a single group of five people in there just, like, doing frost spells and stuff until he it, it'll tell you like he's getting ready to freeze and then everybody starts running in as soon as he freezes everybody's like meleeing even the, the spell casters are just like hitting with their like their stat staves and stuff like that that's really, cool really love to do that so much damage there yeah 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 that's awesome now we're uh continuing on through the dead mines here as you can see the v the footage is fast forwarded just to make sure we can kind of go through Squeeze this but here, yeah. but this is uh we're getting to this point that i thought was really great because up until now you've been going through you start out at the mines and then you kind of go through like a factory slash smelting thing and then you open up this door oh, yeah. and it's like this this small little inlet with a pirate ship yeah it's like the goonies i watched the yeah. goonies recently oh, and yeah. that's totally what this reminds me of it's and that's really cool because you come out of here and you're like wow this is a completely different area yeah. and it Again, it's selling that sense of progression through the dungeon, right. which is really cool. It's like, okay, I understand because, you, you know, you see the wood being chopped up. You see the iron being smelted and you're like, what's going on here? <laughs> and you get, it's like, they're making a huge ship. <laughs> and this thing is big. This is like, um, like a three or four decker um, pirate ship here. So it is absolutely, uh, absolutely huge. <laughs> and... Um, so we're going to get to another boss kind of coming up the boardwalk here. And I think his name is like Smite. And he's a big Tauren guy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And one of the things that's great about him, we were talking about these scripted fights earlier, is every, I think it's like every one-fourth of his health that you get down, he's like, all right, I'm done with you guys. And he stuns everyone. It's yep. a forced stun. And then he picks up a new weapon. <laughs> and I think the first time it's like, you know, a bigger sword. Yeah. And then he takes like a two-handed battle axe the second time or, or some sort of progression. Yeah. But yeah. that's kind of cool because there's not much you really do other than just, okay, just keep attacking and burning him down. Right. But to see that sort of like we're going to progress through the fight and make it more difficult. We're going to ramp it up. He's going to get more angry. Yeah. I think it was really cool. Just to just to have that experience again, almost every single boss, except for the last one here, Van Cleef, I think has a special mechanic with that there. Yeah, and, it's a very cool fight. And one thing I wanted to touch on was the fact that um, World of, World of Warcraft uses a lot of like comedy, but they also have like elements that are really cool. So like you'll fight a dragon, or you'll be in this awesome pirate ship, but then you fight like the chef, and it's like this little murloc, and he's just. Oh. But, uh, yeah, they, they really interplay that stuff. Uh, really oh, yeah. Well. And and they go hard on the puns here. They, <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I remember there's one, there's a, there's a place that you go to late on in the game. I want to say it's like level 50. It's, a, I want to say Ungoral Crater. Is that a dump? Uh -huh. Is that a, a, That's a level? That's an area, yeah. That's an area. And there's, a, there's something where you have to either find or kill monkeys and, or no, it's a robot. And the, the quest name is, like, Chasing Amy. But it was, like, I think it's, like, A-M-E or something like that. Oh, yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, of course, a reference of the movie there. So they do a, a couple of times like that. They kind of uh, pull out um, some cool references. Also in Ungoro, you get Lincoln's boomerang, like oh, Zelda. Like, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, and That's also it. there... Uh, so later on, you'll get a horse, a mount... Oh, and yeah. very very hard to get uh, in vanilla a, a considerable investment of time and and money 
Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the items you can pick up is called a carrot on the stick. Yep. And you can equip that, and essentially the idea is you're making, you're <laughs> pu putting it in front of the horse and making, and actually makes the horse run uh, a little bit faster. So that that's kind of a cool little. Uh, a little toy to play around. Right. Again, Whether it's a horse or a raptor, mm -hmm. it yeah. wants that carrot, man. Yeah, so it's and again, go it's, it's just, um, it's one of these things where they have fun with their lore. They're not too self-serious about it, mm -hmm. but they still have those moments that are really cool. Like, you know, again, uh, as we're going to kill Van Cleef here, if you kind of follow the, the storyline, you find out, which was really cool, is there was there some, some point where Stormwind, which was the human city, uh, either was uh, burnt or got um, attacked and partially destroyed or something. I don't remember exactly what it is. Mm. And so there were a bunch of essentially stonemasons that helped put the uh, the city back together. And when it came time to settle up the debts, the Stormwind uh, magistrates were basically, hey, we're not going to pay you your, full, your fair due. We, we're just not going to give you what you're worth. And so Van Cleef was very unhappy about that. Oh. And he basically formed up a gang to kind of like get back at him. Um, and, and I like that because it's like Van Cleef doesn't seem like a guy that's just, he's, he's not the, the mustache twirling evil person. <laughs> he's like, no, you can see how he was wronged by the, the leaders of the human civilization. And it does paint that gray area where it's like, you know, you still have the Horde and the Alliance, but the, the Alliance isn't perfect. Right. They're not a bunch of like, you know, um, um, guys that are, 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 they're um, not just heroes that are just in the, you know, in the limelight, just yeah, yeah doing the right thing. Do yeah, good. They have faults and they have <laughs> greed and they have corruption. Sure. And so uh, I, I can appreciate that. And similarly, you on the Horde side, you'll see that there are people like the, especially the Tauren, they, they seem like a very spiritual race, right? you know, and they're, they're not necessarily evil. In the way that you might consider like a undead to be evil, um, right? They're all about nature and stuff, and I feel like humans, even even seeing Torin and if they're like nice and stuff, humans will be like, oh, that's like a bull per like that's that's weird, like that's on the other side, kill them or something. Right, know? right, right. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so um, the dungeons here I wanted to point out is um, the dungeons don't really allow you to reset. Uh, although, if you do what we just did here, you can. So we're basically exploiting <laughs> the pathfinding, and the AI can't get to us because there's a, a we, we jumped on a thing, and there's no way to actually jump onto that thing. Um, so the AI reset. But in general, if you aggro something in a dungeon, you either need to zone out of that dungeon or kill it or die. There's yeah. uh, Unlike the, uh, the Outer Worlds, where after some time, the monsters will essentially leash... And they will evade back to their their starting point. Again, going back to EverQuest, this was a, a kind of a big change for quality of life. Mm. Um, what would happen in EverQuest is if if I let's say that I aggroed a monster, and then I came and ran next to you, mm -hmm. and then I went invisible. Yeah. The monster would be like, oh, it's Lobos. I got to kill him. <laughs> and so what? a lot of times what you would have is what's called a train, which, by the way, in this game, you can do a train command where they're like, woo, woo. Right. Um, a train of monsters, which essentially they would gather too many monsters that, that their party couldn't kill it. So they'd all try to run out of the zone, the dungeon in EverQuest. And once you hit that zone line, they drop all the aggro because, you you know, the players are no longer there. Yeah. And they'd be like, all right, what else are around to kill me? <laughs> and a lot of people, there, a lot of times there's people like AFK at the entrance there. <laughs> and so they just come and they'd slaughter everything. Oh, my gosh. So, uh, again, in World of Warcraft, what they did was it's like, if I'm running back to, if I've dropped all aggro, I'll run back. And they have this concept called the evade. Right. Which is basically saying, you can't do damage to me. I can't do damage to you. I'm going to go back to my starting point, refill up to full health, and then, then you can come and attack me if that's what you want. Right. So it's a, it's a way that you can um, have the best of both worlds, being able to run away and um, not aggro other players. It's a little bit gamey because, you know, you're like, I'm attacking you, and it says evade, evade, evade. Right. But I think it was a necessity. Right. But you can you can kite enemies very far as mm -hmm. long as you keep like yes. popping things on them they'll stay aggro to you yep. and <clears throat> there's been a couple times in wow history that were notable because outdoor raid bosses were <coughs> excuse me outdoor raid bosses were pulled all the way to cities 
and they have these mechanics where they like pull everybody to them in in you know that's out of range and it'll just pull the like almost the entire city to them and then kill everybody and there's just corpses everywhere it's crazy it, it's ridiculous it's awesome though now we're going into my favorite zone here duskwood and I, so i actually kind of slow roll this in the in the uh the video because <laughs> what you do is you cross this little bridge and world of warcraft does this often but i think it does it to great effect here where they'll kind of bring the fog in, limit your visibility, and they'll actually change the color. <laughs> they'll change the color of the environment. So as you enter Duskwood, uh, it's it's very much just like Tim Burton Halloween, <laughs> um, Sleepy Hollow right, yeah. village. You know, so it's this kind of like bluish gray fog. And as you're walking down the, the cobblestone road here, they have these single lanterns. They have this really nice, like, a golden light. Glow to it, yeah. yeah it's just it's really cool. And so in, in the, the trees are almost almost kind of like, like pulling in. Like, it's kind of like, it, it's almost like claustrophobic. The trees are, like, encroaching in on the, the cobblestone path there. Yeah. And so you get the sense of this, like just like this, this forest that's super dangerous. <laughs> and you can run, you can run down the um, the road just fine. But if you go out outside of the road, there's like these big spiders and there's wolves. And again, that's really cool because you have this really safe. You know, we have a patrol here. It's it's relatively safe to get to Duskwood, but anywhere outside of that road right. is super dangerous. Except I think. Is his name Stitches? Is the Stitches. abomination yes, that patrols so the main sti road? Yeah. Stitches is on, yes, Stitches <laughs> on, on the south side. And so to go into a little bit of detail on what Stitches is, is F every, I want to say it's every like 30 minutes, uh, this uh, undead abomination comes um, from uh, the south somewhere. I don't know exactly where it spawns. But it's kind of an event because the town, the town crier will be like, hey, there's a abomination on the road. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone to their guard stations. And so you actually see people on the road start lining up and they, they will die. Oh, and, there he is. Yeah, there he is. yeah, he's coming to the city. <laughs> and so there's kind of like multiple checkpoints that Stitches fights through. And by the way, he'll aggro players and you can still pull them all around all mm -hmm. that. Um, and, and eventually they make it to the city where they've got the last stand of the Night Watch. And players can participate and continue to to kill stitches. There's no reward for it. I don't even know if he drops loot. He is like a level 35 elite creature. <laughs> uh, elite basically means he has more hit points than yeah, you know, more like hit points and damage than kind normal. of for a group of people. Yeah, in general. Um, but it is kind of cool because you'll see people come in here and just kind of toss a dot here, throw some wand shots at it, hit it a couple times. Um, I don't know that I've ever seen. I don't think it's possible for Duskwood to to be overrun by Stitches. I think the, the <laughs> AI there are pretty strong, so yeah. they kind of hold it. But yeah, they hold it. it. It's really cool to just see. I think this is the only zone I can think of that has any sort of periodic event like this. Uh, oh no, that's not true. Uh, Storm uh, STV, was Stranger Thorn Vale, vale. Mm -hmm. has uh, a, this little PvP arena. And every every once in a while, there's a, a pi oh. pirate captain that'll say like, "Yar, you landlubbers, I've got some treasure. All you gotta do is pick it up in the the middle of the arena." And so, right. uh, if and that is a PvP arena. So if you're not on a PvP server like we are on here, um, if you're on a PVE arena, you still or sorry, if you're on a PVE server, you still have to fight in PvP to get that uh, that treasure there, which right. is kind of cool. And furthermore, I believe everybody is enemy to everybody yes. so even your own faction yes. you have to fight yeah. over and this box in the middle takes like 10 seconds to open oh. so so you have to make sure that you've either cleared out everybody or you're like people are distracted and you're just That's there cool. opening it and i think you get like a, a a good like pvp trinket or something like that very cool yeah i've never done that uh i, I imagine you could do this if you had like a group of people you'd be like okay we're gonna we're gonna align and you get the thing and then right. we'll fight everyone off so yeah and that would be really kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we're just kind of continuing through killing monsters here in Duskwood. Again, there's lots of these uh, these farmlands. Uh, well, I'm in a graveyard right now, but other areas in, in Duskwood mm -hmm. are these farmlands with, uh, you know, pumpkins and stuff. And, again, you, you sort of learn the story about Duskwood. Is this something where evil has slowly taken over? 
and so it wasn't always this sort of haunted area it was like you know slowly the uh um, it became corrupted through um evil magic i don't i don't know uh specifically what caused it but uh i do know that it had something to do with um the the storyline of like you know going from westfall because you get you mm. get some hints of stuff coming from westfall um that kind of helped cascade this this um this corruption well in general i know a lot of a lot of what the alliance has to deal with is uh the scourge which is just kind of this yeah. mindless kind of zombie uh race that was created by the the lich king and they're under the lich king's control and generally evil bad things they want to do and so you're trying to prevent the spread of the scourge which was originally through like like corrupted grain and it, mm, yeah it, that's people, right that's people right. ate the food and then turned in the scourge and now they're just like spreading and it, it's a it's something to to try and avoid yeah you know, continuing yeah. to spread yeah Thanks for clarifying that because I completely sure. for, I've completely forgot about the scourge. Yeah, it's a so. Warcraft three. So the yep. Warcraft ha does have a a lot of lore going into mm -hmm. World of Warcraft, and I think that's why a lot of people were like super into it because they played the Warcraft series all the way through. Mm -hmm. um, Warcraft three in particular had a ton of story. Yeah, like um, the the stitches we we're talking about is actually an abomination from Warcraft three. It's one of the units that the undead have. Right. Yeah. And so there's a lot of familiar things you're seeing here. And I think the story even takes place like, like three or seven years later, not too far in the yeah, future cause, from cause Warcraft three. Thr Thrall was basically like the war chief there. Um, also one thing uh, we'll get to this part uh, in a bit here, but uh, one of the interesting things about Duskwood is there's a, a quest. There's actually two quests that require items. Um, so one is a bronze tube, which can be crafted mm -hmm. or picked up from the auction house. Mm -hmm. And the other is some Stormwind spices. Mm -hmm. And what people will do is they'll buy a bunch of those, yeah. come to Duskwood, and be like, hey, I'm selling these. <laughs> you know, you want you want to complete the quest or do you want to go back? You want to spend all that money going back to the right. flight path and all that? all that time not just buy it for me for an extra two silver exactly so that again that's really cool that they have this sort of built-in um economy or yep. um way to, to ex extract money uh actually in, in everquest one of the things they would do was a uh, so money actually had a, a weight to it and so you oh. carry too much money and you couldn't move they'd have people <laughs> they would have money exchangers that would come to zone and be like hey for 10 percent, i can give you because uh, basically you could take your platinum or you, sorry, you could take your copper, which is the heaviest thing, uh -huh. and, and move it up to the silver, gold, uh, and the platinum. You're like, hey, you know, you want to give me your, your gold? Yeah. I'll give you platinum to offload nice. you for a little bit of a cut there. So that's cool. Nice. Uh, so we're actually kind of finishing up the video here. Uh, but this is the last thing I really wanted to touch on is that sense of community oh and excitement. Uh, and sometimes, you know, like I said, the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay in World of Warcraft or more some MMOs is tolerable, but mm. it's moments like these that you kind of remember and the stick in the back of your head. Oh yeah. And so this was opening weekend and they just said, Hey, everyone come to the park here in Stormwind and we're going to have like a procession. <laughs> it, it, it was uh, sort of a role playing thing. We're like, Hey, our, our fallen brothers and whatever we're honoring the the fallen brothers and so we all kind of they, everyone kind of gathered of course there's the like what's going on how do we you know how, who's who's running the show you know there's all sorts of little comments and there's some people are trying to role play here i think i i said like uh my friend died in the war when he still owed me five gold pieces um and so again these little community moments they have no um physical impact in the game right. in terms of progression uh, but I think this this allows you to sort of have a little bit of breathing from the the grind of leveling mm -hmm. and trying to farm gold. It's just says, I want to be part of this zeitgeist, <laughs> and um, and so it's still it's funny because you see with all the people here, there's definitely technical issues. People are popping in and out. Right. At some point, the the leader because everyone's like following the leader here. Uh, at some point, the leader actually like. Um, goes away and comes yeah. back, he lags out. <laughs> lags out and so like everyone's like where'd he go what's going on <laughs> uh and again that's the brilliance of mmos is that there's technical issues and sometimes you just have to pretend that th those don't exist i always think of mmos as sort of like there's the game mm -hmm. and then there's g th there's the game as it was intended and then there's the actual game that was implemented <laughs> and sometimes 
the gameplay straddles between the two where you kind of have to game how the system works right um because of limitations <laughs> of the system there yeah, yeah i remember one particular uh event on my server in vanilla uh there were two characters who ha they, were, they had some sort of dispute i don't remember but they said that all right we're gonna duel in that gurubashi arena in that free-for-all spot uh and whoever lost had to delete their character and so they they scheduled it you know days in advance the whole server shows up and is circled around the the outside of this arena they show up the server's lagging so much nobody gets anything done everybody eventually just jumps in and starts killing each other that and and it, it, it was crazy it, but it was a good did time. they ever schedule a makeup duel so I, I i heard that they eventually did a duel kind of outside to the side and no, nobody deleted their character. Yeah, so. <laughs> that's a hard thing. That's a lot of yeah. time to throw away. I think when I, when I finished up here uh, over my three weeks of playing World of Warcraft Classic, I think my played time was like three days on one character. Yeah. Um, so, and, and you know, that's real world days, so it's 24, yeah. 72 hours. <laughs> now, a lot of that was AFK, so technically, sure, yeah. technically it was probably like 20 hours. But, you know, <laughs> that's what I tell my, my parents there. Right, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're just kind of sitting here, and uh, the last shot is just a bunch of people that are continuing going through. Uh, if I were to guesstimate, there's probably 300 people that were at this procession. And I think their their end goal was to go up to Torrin Mill and, like, raid the area there. Oh, my gosh. But, like anything, trying to mobilize a group of that many, uh, you, you eventually get to Torrin Mill or wherever you're going with, like, one tenth of the people <laughs> that actually um yeah people lose interest and stuff last yeah. night on our server uh they raided our uh, they raided thrall the orgrimmar like oh, city yeah. leader and killed him oh wow so he was gone so oh interesting you couldn't like turn in quest to him or anything and everybody was like oh he's dead but, yeah. Well, yeah, so there's really no end credits to World of Warcraft, but we've we've kind of hit our hour limit here, and I think that was a sure. really great spot to, to stop off on. There's so much to talk about. There is, yeah. I've been enjoying Classic so much, man. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. It's, it's, it's tough to not just schedule all my time on stream for Classic, but I know it's not yeah. the most exciting to watch. So Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, so yeah, again, that's, that's kind of uh, World of Warcraft uh, in a nutshell. In I hope that channel. I hope that that kind of um, resonated with a lot of people, and they really enjoyed uh, their times in World of Warcraft Classic as well. Mm -hmm. um, so a uh, cu couple uh, closing things here. We did want to give it a shout out, of course, to our Patreon members that mm -hmm. joined over the last episode. So we had uh, three new uh, individuals: Jesus, Zachary, and Keith. Thank you so much for your support. It was great to see you uh, in the Discord channel, chatting it up. Uh, yeah. I think um, we've got some real big chatters in there, which is great. Nice. It's keeping me uh, keeping me active. Uh, <laughs> lots of lots of really great uh, World of Warcraft stories being told there, um, and some help in some of the other games there. So I uh, really appreciate you all coming out there and 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 helping um, support the community there. Yeah. And uh, of, of course, if you also want to join in the Discord or the Patreon, uh, whatever it may be, just head on over to patreon.com slash Saturday Morning Gaming Show to learn more. We have a lot of rewards there, including the Discord channel. We got some uh, behind the scenes footage there. Uh, and then uh, every week we have this little thing called Midweek Moment, where it's just oh, yeah. Lobos or I sharing about a minute or two of some some retro game experience which i absolutely love i think it's really cool yeah Ton, tons of those to tons of to those listen to, go. to so. yeah yeah so let's uh, actually talk about the hall of heroes absolutely yeah the hall of heroes um i'll read this yeah. is a chance for you to flex your gaming cred each episode simply play and beat whatever game we're covering then you take a snap of the the end screen or whatever progress we designated you to make um, and send it to us at the our email Saturday morning gaming show at gmail.com mm -hmm. and we'll get you added to the list. It's just kind of like a scoreboard that yeah. uh, we've got various most of the time it's just a certain amount of points based on how long the game is mm -hmm. um, to, to complete it. Yeah. This one was uh, it was five points for every five, five levels. For, yeah and so all the applicants that sent in their stuff uh, they all got to level 20. Level 20. So nice. they all get the full 20 points there. So actually Very let's cool. go ahead and uh, yeah let's swap let's over to that. Yeah talk about the uh, Hall of Heroes entrance for World of Warcraft Classic. The first 
We've got Alamaxia. Oh, let's see if we can full screen this. I don't think it's gonna much get much bigger, but oh, wait. Yeah, Good zoom, job. zoom skills. So Alamaxia said, World of Warcraft is where I earned my MMO chops. I know life's my way through part-time retail work, part-time college, and full-time World of Warcraft starting out in beta. I still remember my very first raiding night. I was on standby for a solid 30 minutes before being finally called into Molten Core. That's what any good mage would do. I spent with time, uh, that time making water for the casters. I ended up with 40 stacks of max level water. Needless to say, I stuck around this game for over 10,000 hours That's and three a lot expansions. Hours. It is. And it spawned my love-hate existence of MMOs that span multiple server-first raid achievements across multiple games. Wow, congrats on that. Thank you, everyone in the Wolfpack Guild who has made this classic experience truly classic. Yeah, and actually, Elmaxia had a much longer uh, write-up that we uh, reposted with his permission on the Saturday Morning Gaming Twitter. Oh, awesome. So take a look at that at Saturday M Gaming. I think it's a, a really, really great story. <laughs> Excuse me. Wow. Alamaxia also... Um, wow. <clears throat> wow, indeed. Wow, indeed. Wow, classic. Alamaxia also created an add-on for our guild that allows you to use uh, my Twitch emotes and other people's Twitch emotes in the in the chat in-game, which is pretty cool. So thank you for that. Um, oh, can it not? No, no. Right. Next. Next. Ne next. Next. Why isn't Good it job. nexting? Shouldn't it be next? Next is... Boom, Harotham. Here's Goobus crushing it on Crom Crush. Loving classic. Feels like I'm back in high school. I want to note that very fancy monocle he has. <laughs> it's wonderful. It's a very nice gnome he's got there. Brisk Mountain. Don't know if you can see it clearly or not, but it's level 24. Yeah, you can see that. Yeah, I, I believe you. Allergy per problem. <laughs> that sounds like me right now. Um, <laughs> Gaming Steiner. Uh, so many great memories came flooding back on this one. Good call. Keep up the great content. Looking forward to the next classic. And next star. Just started listening to the podcast yesterday in the background while playing WoW. So, of course, I had to join in on this one. Just got him the 20 last night, a bit after the Shadowgate episodes. Great work, guys. Keep yeah. it up. So, next star is actually new. And because of the points in there, he's actually uh, pretty high up there. So, let's take Ooh, a look at nice. the, uh, the, the rankings. Standings. Yeah, the rankings. So... Oh. At 15, again, the Kyle Mack, Detache Senpai, Splove, One, and Kiaku at five points. Now, they are a little bit in danger of getting knocked off, so if you, uh -oh. you might want to try to get the next game done. Yeah, tied at number 11, Dog Type, Jazz Never Sleeps, Lulu, Kachu, and Yoshi355 with 10 points. At 15 points, we have Tub Tubanaga at spot number seven. Number six, Next Star, a new entry there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At 20 points there, right? Yeah, 20 points. Alamaxia at number five with 25 points. Nonsense Magia, number four with 30 points. Number three, we have Harotham at 50 points. And sitting pretty up top, number one, the pair, Gaming Steiner and Brisk Mountain, 55 points. I have to say, it's good to see them up there like brothers. But I don't know if the next game is going to allow that. Uh oh, we're gonna yeah. have to see uh, how we, got we a can. Little bit, we got a little special rule going on. We here. do, we do. But what is the next game that we're gonna be doing? Well, the next game is actually the first of its type because neither of us, prior to deciding it, had ever played that game. Ooh. So we're we're both going in new. Now I have such, such, since completed it. Oh, okay. So I'm behind, but yeah. that's okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Do you want to you want to say what it is? Sure. The next game is brrr, Super Mario RPG. Yeah, for the SNES. And that's one that people have been like, Lobo's got to play this that's a, good a game. bunch. So. It's a good game. I It, it took me about uh, 19 hours to complete. Cool. And so with five points per every five hours, the next game is going to give you 15 points. Nice. But, nice. That, yes. but that's not it. So... To spice things up, we want to add a little special challenge. Mm -hmm. All right, so... In Super Mario RPG, there is an attack that you can jump repeatedly. Um, actually, this was uh, courtesy of Alamaxia, so I wanted to give oh. him credit for this really fantastic idea. Ooh. There's an attack that allows you to jump repeatedly as long as you succeed in the jump. So you can basically hit as many consecutive jumps as possible. A timing thing. A timing thing. Yeah. My max was 19. Mm -hmm. Now, if you can beat my max, so if you can hit 20 or above you'll get five additional points, okay? But the person that sends the highest 
will get an additional five points. So, oh boy, it's a possibility for either Harathan, <laughs> Briss Mountain, Game of Skyner to secure that number one spot. Oh there. man. Separate yeah. them out, or so, who knows? Someone like uh, Al Maxi or Nonsense Mejia could come in and upset with a higher value. I mean, anything can happen. I'm really excited about <laughs> anything this. Anything can. So just happen. to confirm, 15 points for beating, five points for beating my jumping score, and then f an additional five points for whoever gets the highest. So possibility of 25 top. points there. Ooh, now, wait. in the game, there is an NPC you can talk to. If you don't know where it is, please look it up to confirm your how many you did. Oh, so there's nice. two ways you can confirm it. One, you can get it on video. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're streaming, shoot me a link, whatever. Uh, Pre-recorded video, whatever. Or you can go talk to this NPC and he'll say your highest jump count was this. Nice. So those are the only two ways that I can confirm it is that you've sent a picture of what the uh, NPC says or that you actually get it on camera. So gotcha. uh, cool. good luck to everyone. 19 pretty good i don't think it was that hard to hit uh but i think i think people i would not be surprised if i see we see 40s and 50s <laughs> i did 200 lightning dodges in final fantasy 10 so yeah. we'll see we'll yeah. see <laughs> well sadly we've reached the end credits of this episode and we wanted to thank everyone for watching us on twitch we the show airs every other weekend uh at uh, on twitch.com slash lobos jr uh, and of course, we also want a special shout out for people that uh, listen to us on the podcast. Yeah, the podcast releases the following Saturday after the, the Twitch stream. So make sure to follow and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Google, or whatever platform of choice you want. You know what? That I messed that up. I uh -oh. still I forgot to change that. It's supposed to be Sunday, and I messed that up. Oof. I gave you... That was actually... I so you mean the next day, then? The next day. It, next it releases Sunday. the next day yeah, so let's just Sunday. I'll, I'll to, yeah, so why don't you just re-say that, and we'll say... Okay. Uh, our Twitch airs, and our Twitch airs every other Saturday, and the podcast releases the very next Sunday. So make sure to follow and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Google, Spotify, whatever you want. Yeah, absolutely. And for the dates that we don't have uh, the show on Lobos' channel, uh, I did start streaming retro games on Saturday morning gaming. Oh, nice! Uh, uh, on the Twitch, so it's twitch.tv slash Saturday morning gaming. Heck Best yeah. part is. Lobos and I stream different times, most likely. So go to Lobos for great gameplay and go to me for retro gameplay. Nice. Uh, at, but if you do have any feedback, we'd love to hear from you. Just shoot us an email at Saturday Morning Gaming Show at gmail.com. Or follow us on Twitter at Saturday M Gaming. And a special shout out to Techno Axe for much of the music this episode. For Saturday Morning Gaming, I'm Lobos. And I'm Ryan. We'll see you October 5th for episode 8. Super Mario RPG. Yay. Good job. GG. That's the end of the uh, podcast. And actually, astute, uh, astute observers and listeners may note that October 5th is a little bit, is like three weeks out, right? Right, yeah, because I'll be at TwitchCon end of September. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Oh, you know what? Link's Awakening Remake comes out, too. Mm -hmm. Ah, Link's Awakening is a good one, yeah. too. <laughs> well, you'll, have, you'll have three weeks to play this game. So yeah. you, sh you should be good. Yeah, that should, should, should give me some good time. So cool. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for stopping on by. Again, we really appreciate all the live viewers here. It's great to see you uh, having fun in chat. So what do you got go going on today, Lobos? Uh, today is going to be some more Blasphemous. It's a good kind of ca Castlevania, Metroidvania game. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I'll be jumping back onto more WoW Classic. Uh-oh. Because i got to keep that going. But the episode is over. Yeah, well, the, uh, the, the life continues, though. <laughs> the game All goes right. on. Well, I'll definitely be uh, watching you on that. So. Sweet. Uh, that the blasphemous looked a little like dead cells and the stuff it does saw. yeah the art style is very dead cells but it's you know it's it's not randomized it's a set path through and kind of it has you know good level of design shortcuts and that sort of stuff to get back to areas that's great yeah. so yeah cool well we'll see you guys in a bit for that in All the meantime right. enjoy the tunes see bye ya. guys